With this year being the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, I thought it might be fun to build some specific props and artifacts from the movie. Starting with one of the first devices that came to mind, the A99 Aquata Breather, or Jedi Rebreather. Now, I actually couldn't find an existing accurate model for this era of rebreathers, so I decided to design my own. I found out the original props used these specific Robart hinges, so I picked some up to use as well as to scale the model off of for the best accuracy. I'll be resin 3D printing pretty much everything in this video since a lot of it is smaller and more detailed props. The rebreathers were a lot smaller than I would have originally thought, so I had no issues fitting two rounds of pieces on one small resin printer build plate. Since these pieces are all resin, I of course cleaned them with alcohol before using my heat gun pen to help with support removal, and then finally cured all of the pieces. As for priming the pieces, I used a white primer on the mouthpiece as well as the mesh sides since those pieces are actually going to be painted white in the end. It was going to be the easiest way to prime them in white first. And then everything else was primed in a gloss black base. I kept all the pieces for this model pretty separated so that it was a lot easier to paint. There's no masking needed and since it's such an easy assembly, it's just going to overall be a super simple prop to put together in the end. Painting was also really simple. I dabbed on some bright bronzy copper paint to the side pieces, but everything else I just left as the primer paint. I did design printable arms, but of course I really wanted to use the actual hinges on mine. These pieces are quite long compared to the size of the rest of the rebreather, so I designed it that you snip off the ends of them. You can see here the comparison between the original on the left hand side and the cut version on the right. You're basically just leaving it so that it has that one notch left on the rest of the piece. And all that's left after that is to assemble everything, so I glued the central tube to the mouthpiece and then these end pieces together so it's just gluing on the top cap to the mesh part and then that mesh part onto the bottom and then it's just sliding the filters onto one end of the hinge piece and the other end into the mouthpiece on either side. It's a nice snug fit so I didn't even bother gluing these parts together. I also went ahead and designed the second rebreather style. This version I believe appeared in a visual guide but it never appeared to be used in the film as both Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon use the same type of rebreather which is the first copy copper style one. All that is different between the two versions is the ends or filtration parts. So I figured since I'd already designed everything else, might as well go ahead and design the one extra piece so that I can have the two versions in my collection. I also designed a custom stand for them so that they could be displayed nicely. But moving on to the next prop, sticking with the theme of Jedi artifacts, next I decided to make an image caster holo projector. It's a pretty simple little prop, but it does help add to my goal of gradually turning my workshop into Luthen Rails Gallery. So got all of those pieces printed, cleaned, and cured. And for painting, I really wanted to go with a high chrome look for a lot of the parts, so I used the Alclad gloss black base on everything other than the gold disc parts, in which I just used another gloss black primer that isn't as intensely shiny. This had a lot to do with the types of paint that I wanted to put over the primer, so for any of the super high chrome parts, I used Alclad chrome, and on the gold discs, I did a mixture of these new metal paints that I'm absolutely loving. And for the back disc, I went with a silvery, pearly metallic color, as it seemed like it would just go best with the rest of the prop. And all that was left after that was assembly. This particular model also has most of the parts broken down to be more easily painted, so it's attaching the front and back discs to the gold rings, attaching those halves together, and then adding the three silver arms. But we can't have a holo projector without also building a comlink. If you didn't know, these comlinks are actually an old Gillette women's razor, but we'll be using entirely 3D printed parts for this video. There's actually a lot of different examples of this Hush 98 comlink, so you could absolutely like customize this to whatever you want. But for this video, since this was Phantom Menace specific, I decided to mostly focus on Qui-Gon's comlink, although I did make a second one at the same time that I did sort of have matched the first one, although I did want it a little bit different, so that it wasn't like two of the exact same thing. The file that I was using was in a million pieces, so you could easily swap out different greeblies if you wanted to. The ones I was building were mostly going to be silver, so that's why I went ahead and glued as many of the individual parts onto the main body as I could, just so that it was easier to paint. Of course, depending on what color you want your finished comlink to be, it might be easier to leave a lot of the greebly parts separate instead of painting them all the one color. I did still do a little bit of hand painting just because it was going to be a lot easier than bothering spraying these. I did go ahead and assemble everything into one solid comlink piece so that when I started the weathering process, it would affect the entire part. 
I start off with using a black wash, especially in the wavy lines on the front of the comlink. I always go back and forth between applying black wash and then blotting excess off so that it's not dripping black all over the prop. But there were some areas that looked like they could use some heavier weathering, so I switched to a mixture of black metallic paint as well as just straight black acrylic paint. This was to build up more of that darker gunk that you see around the buttons. And here's how my two comlinks turned out. I might end up building a third one and doing a bit more customization on it than these two because they are really quick fun props to build. Even though it's small, the Japur snippet is one of the most significant props in the Phantom Menace as well as the prequels in general. Japur is a type of wood so I thought it would be a fun break from painting all of these metal-like props. I started out by priming the piece white and then I mixed together some black wash and this cream color to make a very light wash rinse over the entire piece just to give it some more texture. I wanted to build up a few different layers of paint to try and give it that translucent ivory wood look. After that, I added some black wash into the recessed design. My black wash is actually a very dark brown wash and this design looks like it's probably meant to be burnt into the wood. The piece has that shine that a lot of ivory has, so I went and added some gloss onto the finished prop. And here is what the finished pendant looks like. And last but not least, Queen Emidala's tiara. This is easily one of the most iconic costume pieces from The Phantom Menace, and I was so thrilled when I found this file. I rescaled the pieces to fit one of these foam heads to display it later, but I also resized the side fin pieces to be about 15% larger than the middle crown part. This might be the most beautiful thing I ever 3D print. The details on these pieces were insane. This was easily the largest prop I decided to tackle in this video, so I had to bust out my M3 Max to print these pieces on as well as use my wash and cure max to clean them appropriately. I just had the machine clean the parts and not go through its entire clean and cure process so that I could more easily remove all of these supports. The crown part just fit in my Mercury X cure machine but the fin pieces I had to cure in the wash and cure max. I did a bit of assembly before painting, first this jewel piece that I also added extra resin to to make it stronger, but I did not actually film attaching the side pieces onto the crown because it was stressful. <laughs> Now, I'm not really going to talk about these first painting steps because I ended up repainting over the entire thing, so I guess start off with your gloss black base of choice. Now, because I did think I was going to be going with this original gold, I did mask off the parts that I didn't want painted in this titanium gold. But if I had started painting this right the first time, I probably could have just hand painted this on instead of airbrushing it. But this tiara, crown, headdress, whatever we want to call it, is essentially three different gold colors. You've got your very stereotypical gold, you have like a silver gold, and then this bronzy old gold on the area that is underneath the red lace, which we will of course get to in a moment, but the reason that I decided to repaint the typical gold color was because I felt that the difference in metallic finishes between the two paints was too off. It just sort of looked weird to have this one area be a lot more chrome, so I suggest if you do decide to make one of these tiaras that you try to stick to a very similar line of metallic paints so that the level of reflectiveness of the metallics all are very similar similar to each other. I feel like that gives the best effect. I did also mix in a bit of black paint into the old gold color or that is underneath the red lace. I felt that it was a bit too shiny, a bit too light, but after that initial gold painting fiasco, hopefully I'm about to redeem myself with what I'm about to do here on this red lace because there's really unfortunately no real way around it. The only way you're going to get this design on is by hand painting all of these red details. And this was thankfully made a lot easier by this particular brush it is by Windsor Newton. It is a Cotman Designer Series brush, which I'm going to turn into a nerdy visual artist on you for a second, but this is a watercolor brush and it is a specific series to Windsor Newton that is essentially somewhere between a traditional round brush and a script brush. So these hairs are longer than normal, which means they hold more paint so you don't have to constantly be refilling your brush. And because it's not an actual script brush, it is a lot easier to control. I used to use them all of the time in my watercolor paintings and this was actually the first time I tried it out 
on any prop work and it worked awesome. Not that this particular brush is going to make you an amazing painter all of a sudden, like you really are going to need quite a lot of brush control and skill to paint the red designs onto this piece and not be constantly fixing little blobs here and there because this step is definitely not easy. I would say this is probably the most challenging paintwork that I have done in maybe a year's worth of videos. It does give such an amazing and impressive effect in the end though. The final little painting details were the pearls around the top part as well as this actual top piece that I then glued on since it was all painted. The final piece is the front jewel. These were resin 3D printed in clear resin that I then dyed with alcohol ink. I thought I would probably like the look of the alcohol ink than the depth that it gives as opposed to just resin 3D printing this in translucent red resin. And this did get clear coated before attaching it onto the front. And here is the final headdress and also the final Phantom Menace prop that we'll be building today. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in which we focus on smaller props from a single movie. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.